All right, so we got tasked to start a starter deck video on Diana. I don't know if you can even see it from there, but I, honestly, I don't have a studio and uh, this is, I don't, I don't know. I, I just wanted to touch grass. So I'm out here. We're going to start with the Diana starter video. If you like the Ranger gameplay darting in and out of combat, then well, this might be the champion for you. That's really tall. The dog goes great. <laughs> Before we do a deep dive on the new things Diana brings to the table, we do have to recap on some of the older keywords. Now, veteran players, feel free to skip ahead. These will be a little boring. But newer players, feel free to rewind in case I talk a little bit quickly. Diana relies heavily on the on enter effect, which basically means as soon as a card enters the field, the effect will go onto the stack. Cards like Imperial Rifleman and Airship Engineer are two distinct cards that have this effect. Next, we have On Banish. This only appears on one card, but it's pretty simple. As soon as the card is banished, you get to trigger the effect. Now, on Quick Draw Piercer, that really happens when you shoot the gun twice, and it goes to Banish. Pretty simple. On Attack is pretty simple. As soon as you declare an attack, this effect will trigger. Cards like Hasty Messenger or Penetrator Round are two cards that have this effect. Floating Memory is a big one. It allows the card to get banished from Graveyard and help pay for memory costs. Those are cards with the little blue numbers on them. Cards like Idle Thoughts and Automaton Bomber are two really big cards that you need to watch out for. All right, whoa, that was quite a bit of keywords there, but onto the exciting stuff. Level zero strategy is pretty simple. I personally would like to get to level one as soon as possible. There's cards like Idle Thoughts and Supply Drones. They're very good opening cards, but if you do not see them, don't be afraid to put cards like Incendiary Shot just so you can level. If you do not see Idle Thoughts or Supply Drone, don't be afraid to put down a bullet from your hand oh, okay. so that you can level next turn because all bullets are like one cost. Oh, oh I thought bullets were like a material They're both. Now that we're level one, we're introduced to Diana Keen Huntress, and with her comes the Ranger class bonus. Now, key things to look out for is range, insert some number here, which basically means the damage gets amped up by that number. However, that card has to be distant. Well, Shinjo, what the heck is distant? Well, distant is just a state of that card, and there's a few cards that give distant to that unit. Cards like reposition, backstep and evasive maneuvers just to name a few. Now rangers specialize in darting in and out of combat so my advice to you is to play these distant cards on your opponent's turn because distant lasts until the end of the controller's turn. So to simplify play these cards on their turn so that way you can deal more damage on your turn. Now, I like to stay at level one for just a little bit. Cards like Automaton Bomber offers floating memory or range five. So you deal a ton of damage and your opponent has to respond. Now you also have floating memory. Keep in mind, don't be afraid to stay level one for one or two turns. Diana heavily relies on cards in your hand. So don't burn cards just to hit level three as fast as possible. Diana 1 is pretty decent, unless you want to start shooting. And then Diana 2 is like, you can like bring out a gun level 1. Like you can go to level 1, next turn bring out a gun, and then go to level 2 and then shoot with a gun. When we level up to level 2, we get introduced to Diana Deadly Duelist. Two effects come into play. You have the on enter, materialize any kind of bullet card, and you have the inherited effect, which basically means you now have range 2 at level 2, or level three. Now the main strategy here is to prepare for level three where a huge amount of burst can happen. So cards like Incendiary Shot, Force Load, or Umbral Type are cards that you will be looking for to prepare for that level up. If your opponent is struggling to get cards or level up, don't be afraid to stay at level two with the range two effect cards like Backstab, Evasive Maneuvers, and even Rocket Jump are good ways to give Diana more damage. So that way, when you do bring out a gun and shoot your opponent, you just keep doing damage. Now, before we move on to level three, I do want to point out you do have to prepare for it. 
put cards like Floating Memory into your graveyard as much as possible and keep cards like Incendiary Shot, Force Load, and Umbral Tithes in your hand or sometimes on the field to prepare for that level three burst damage. When you hit level three, you are introduced to Diana Duststalker and the cool new element Umbra. Now, something cool can happen here. Remember Diana from level one, she has that lineage release ability. Once you activate that ability, make sure you have one card in memory or at least one floating memory in your graveyard. So that way you can bring out Shadows Twin. This is Diana's signature gun and your biggest win condition. It has an on hit effect where it basically doubles the on hit effect. And it also combos well with Diana 3's passive ability generate creeping torment generate is a new keyword it basically just means bring a car from outside of the game so you know like your deck box or something like that but keep in mind you can fail to generate so if you do run out of creeping tournaments you technically can't bring out any more so just make sure you're prepared so if you just run out of tokens you can't generate any yeah you can you actually cannot generate more technically now, once you're level three, honestly, you should be winning within about one to two turns. Shadow's Twin, again, doubles any kind of on-hit effect, so you can burst down your opponent's champion with cards like Incendiary Shot and force load the Penetrator round, so that way they cannot prevent any of that. So you can do potentially like 12 damage and generate two Creeping Torments onto your enemy's lineage. Now, these are curse cards which is a brand new type of card and it just kind of slides into the bottom of any champion's lineage now creeping torment does two unpreventable damage anytime they draw their second card of the game and that leads well with umbral type which forces you to draw two cards into memory so this is a very cool execution style play you shoot them with shadows to win they generate two creeping torments and you play umbral tithe to deal the extra damage. Brownie points if they have six cards in memory after it resolves. Now, Shinja, what if you cannot execute them with this style of play? Like Tenoris has 30 HP at level three. There's a few, there's a few cards that could help you win. Like, I don't know how to even pronounce this card. An an Anathema's End, and which banishes all curse cards on the champion stack and just kind of explodes and does extra damage. So if you get to hit them multiple times, let's say they have two or even four creeping torments, that does extra damage. Now, I do understand that Grand Archive is a pretty complex game. There is lots and lots of possibilities and different lines that you can look through. Now, here's a couple of tips and tricks that I have for you depending on the situation. Airship Engineer has a cool interaction. On enter, if you control a distant unit, you get to draw into memory. Well, you can actually respond to the on enter effect and give Airship Engineer distant. So for example, you play Airship Engineer, it resolves, on enter goes on the stack, and in response, you play a card like reposition. Then you get to just draw into memory, just in case you need that one extra card. Another thing to note, if you somehow get to level three faster than your opponent and they are stuck at level one or even level two, you can bring out Taser Shot and load it into Shadow Twin, and the four damage on level up applies twice. So now they have to make that choice. If they level up, they will take eight damage instead of the typical four. That honestly kind of ends games most of the time. So keep that in mind. Now, I can't talk about Diana and all the cool things that she does without talking about her strengths and her weaknesses. Now, keep in mind, Diana is a ranger and she isn't meant to maintain damage every turn. So you have to be careful, make sure you plan out when you're going to make your distance, when you're going to engage, and sometimes it's good to just slow down and, and kind of chill out. Now, Diana has a couple of weaknesses from the starter deck that can be alleviated with cards from the booster box. Cards like Carter, which have the cleave ability, help you deal with kind of the aggressive ally decks like Tenoris or any kind of wind ally sort of deck. Diana also relies on directly hitting the enemy champion. So any sort of taunt or intercept that 
prevents that from happening is just so detrimental to Diana's play. So cards like Demon's Aim from the booster box that just kind of circumvents that, super worth looking into. If you're playing against a water champion, you're most likely going to run into Fracturize. Now that card is pretty devastating against Diana who relies on her guns. So I recommend cards like Deploy Gun Shield, which just adds Spell Shield to those guns so you can maintain your win con. One of Diana's weaknesses is just tons of bodies that swing into her and Tenoris just happens to be good at creating a ton of allies that just are just super annoying to deal with. But Diana does have a tool to deal with that and that is Blast Shot Pump, which has an effect if it does damage, you get to bounce that damage to someone else. So if you hit Tenoris, for example, you can hit a unit that he is protecting or vice versa super useful card. One thing to note about this pump shotgun is that the damage is dealt after retaliation steps. So if you hit two allies, only one of them, the one that you're initially targeting, can retaliate. The other one that is going to take damage is just gonna get hit. Now, shotguns are not the only way to deal with tons of bodies on the field. If you cannot kill them, why not be defensive? Diana has a defensive tool called Flash Grenade, though it does have a prerequisite of Diana needs to be distant, but this is really neat because it prevents three damage every single time. So if you have six allies on the field and they all swing six times, as long as they're three or under, it will prevent all, all of that damage, which is pretty neat. That was honestly quite a bit of information, but this should serve as a good baseline for you to understand how to play Diana now. All right, all right, guns and bullets may not be your thing, so you, I guess you can farm herbs as Arasana or bonk people with shields as Tonaris, and those guys are available over at the Main Deck Games channel with my good friend Dan. But that's a wrap for this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. I'm hungry, so I'm out of here. See you later.